Okay, kiddos, we're going to talk about denim. So, I did these pants in denim, and I did those pants in denim. And I'm going to show you how I did that. And if you want to do it in watercolor, it's basically the same thing. I'll tell you how to do that. But for today, I'm going to talk about doing denim with marker, uh, color pencil, lost my train of thought, and gel pen. So, first things first, pick the blue of your choosing. Um, usually with denim, especially depending on your technique, the overall appearance of your denim afterwards might be a little bit lighter than the marker that you chose. So if you're debating between two different blues, I would say just pick like the darker one maybe or um, add more shadow if you pick the lighter denim. If you choose to use watercolor, what you're going to do, it's going to be the same thing basically. You're just going to fill in multiple layers of that color to build up the color and build up your saturation. And then you'll go in and add your shadows like we do with basic garments. But that can take a while. And so, you know, you can pick your medium. See what works for you. Marker works best for me. It's fast. I know we all have places to be. Well, not physically, but mentally. I, I know we've all been down an emotional rabbit hole or two this quarantine. So, um, but you know what? This is a great time to get into watercolor because you don't really have anywhere else to be. And you can just do a layer and then do other homework and then do another layer and then do other homework and then um, keep that cycle going for a long, long time. I just went, oh, I just got sad. So picking up the morale around here, we're going to go in and we're going to add some shadows. That always makes it fun. My light source is going to be on the left side of the pants. Um, for this scenario, so pick your light source, figure out where your shadows are, where your highlights are, throw in those little wrinkle shadows. Pants always have shadows um, on like the, the zipper fly and those little whiskers around the crotch and leg area. Moving on and picking up our darkest color pencil, we are going to start making shadows with diagonal lines and we're going to use diagonal lines because denim is a twill weave which basically at the end of the day it means that you have two yarns one going vertically and one going horizontally those are your warp and your weft you'll learn about that in like ATD 323 I want to say something like that and basically what's up with that is that these blue yarns are showing more than the white yarns and they just create this little pattern where like you can see like a little tiny white line every now and then so if you're wearing jeans but like let's be real when's the last time you wore jeans um but if you do want to take a little look see at them then you can see that this weaving pattern um creates those little diagonal lines that's just that's how all twill weaves work i am actually wearing viscose pants right now that are twill weave but are made of viscose and polyester so <sighs> that's another fun fact for you jenna's fun fact of the day super cool ta stuff right i can just shove this information down your throat and i have so much fun doing it so um, I'm still going in and filling in all of these little shadows with diagonal lines. Oh, another thing to remember, um, because I just remembered it, is, <laughs> is when you are doing these diagonal lines, make sure that your diagonal follows the, um, the line of your body, right? So when you have these diagonal lines, going down your leg. If you have a bend in your knee, you just need to make sure that that diagonal is still is still following um, that bend. So just so it doesn't look weird and funky, doesn't matter which way the diagonal goes, just keep it consistent throughout. I don't want to see like cross hatching. That's not what a twill weave is. That's, that's a whole nother beast right there. But for now, diagonals, keep them all the same way. Um, and then just have them follow the body as they go down and around it. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my pencil. I'm going to hold it at like a maybe like a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to throw in some of these just mid-tone areas. I'm just going to kind of create this texture that the pencil has in these pants. 
and I'm going to do this throughout the whole pant leg and this is what really helps create that texture of denim. It's such an interesting fabric because it you can tell that there's texture to it. You can you can look at something and know that it's denim because it has that texture, but it's also a very soft texture. And so color pencil really helps us achieve that, especially when we're working with like marker or watercolor, which are two um, mediums that really have a tendency to create one smooth color, which is great in its own sense, but sometimes you want that texture. So that's how you create denim is by using this texture from color pencil. And I'm just, you know, I'm going to town on it. I want to fill up the empty space. I hate having empty space in these videos. So I'm just going to keep talking and we're going to have a good time. And we're, everybody's having fun, right? Okay, I trust that you all are still following me. And you guys are all still having fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a cool tone gray. And we do a cool tone gray because denim is typically blue and... Blue is a cool color, so when you pick a gray, you want it to be cool so it fits, so it looks like it's a lighter version of your blue, kind of in a way. A warm gray would kind of make your it would make your jeans look dirty, and you don't want that. So, cool tone grays are where it's at. And what we're gonna do with this cool tone gray is we are going to just throw in some diagonal lines in these highlight areas. And so this is helping to create that texture that we were talking about with denim, that really soft um, texture. And it also creates those areas where you can see more of those little white lines that show through and more of those faded areas in the pants. So like the, um, like the top of the, your thighs and like maybe around the knees and the cat whisker areas, those have a lot of fading. If you look at your jeans, you'll probably notice that there is... A difference in value between um, like the side seams and the middle of your pant leg so that's what we're doing here we are just adding in these highlights to create those areas where you can see the white lines and if you do have an area where you want it to be more faded then you can do that with the same color so taking a white colored pencil, you're just going to go in and you're just going to hit these brightest highlights, these, um, you know, the, just the brightest areas, maybe the areas with the most fading. Um, you're just going to hit those with just a little bit of that white colored pencil for a highlight. Um, I would not recommend using charcoal for this portion because charcoal can get a little bit nasty with colored pencil. I've tried it a time or two and um, there's a lot of things I regret in life and that is definitely up there though. It's probably in the top five moments of things I regret. Um, and that was probably really, really overdramatic. You can go and you can try messing around with them. I would just recommend doing it on like a little sample or like a little like side piece of paper. Don't maybe try it on your cookie right away. I wouldn't recommend that. Now what I'm gonna do, um, because I started rambling and I got done with that, I'm going to just take a super dark navy, like darker than the shadow color that we were using. And we're just gonna go and we're gonna hit those darkest shadows. And this is because when you have denim, which is like a really thick textile, right? You create these really dark shadows because there is such little light getting to those areas that are far away from the light source. So like in your wrinkles or like the other side of the body opposite from the light source. And this just really helps create a lot of depth. I got yelled at so much in high school for not having dark enough shadows. And I think it traumatized me into adding really dark shadows, which is beautiful because now my stuff looks 3D. And, um, well, 3D enough. <laughs> I'm trying to humble myself here um, and we're just going to keep going at it and keep building it up until you're like, yeah, this looks like something that like is 3D, you know, I'm just filling up the time. I'm just, I don't want you guys to sit here in silence and listen to the crickets in my yard. So we're just going to keep talking and from there... What we're going to do is we're just going to toss in 
a little gel pen moment for your seams. You could do this with colored pencil. Um, I just like my seams to be kind of bright and fun. So I like to um, fight against the gel pen that does not want to work on colored pencil and just toss in some little seam lines. It's okay if it doesn't make a whole line. If it starts skipping on you, you know how like when um, your gel pen kind of skips and it, like it's not super like smooth, that's okay. That's actually kind of perfect because when you look at jeans, you don't see that whole seam line. And sometimes when you do, like if you go in and you add the seam line and it's just all there, it's kind of distracting. And so what you can do also if that's too bright for you, you can just kind of tap it with like your thumb or something and pick up some of that gel pen and it'll be a little bit more transparent. It'll show some of that blue through there, but it will still be visible, you know? You know, the seam is not the star of the show in this case, right? Everybody, every main character needs a sidekick and the seam is just the sidekick in this situation. So, um, <laughs> I'm really just filling up the time, guys. I think that's just about done though, so we can stop doing that. Okay, lastly, if you want to, if some of those lines are a little bit too bright for you, you can go in with your marker or with a color pencil and just kind of super lightly go over that gel pen. It will just bring down the value a little bit so it kind of fits the color of the marker a little bit better, of the jeans, and um, it won't be like as stark of a difference. You just need to be careful with the markers. Um, obviously, they're not as fine as fine tip as the gel pen, so expect to have a little bit of um, marker go off of that gel pen and then um, onto the jeans, so it might create a little shadow. And then, lastly, if you have a metallic marker, you can go in, throw in some buttons, and there you go, guys. Look at that—twelve minutes of denim.